Hey, this is Lady C coming at you with another video. And in this upcoming episode, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Word macros. And what I like about macros is it allows you to record repetitive steps. So you don't have to keep on typing the same thing over and over again. So in this upcoming episode, I'm going to keep it really simple and show you how to create a signature. So let's hop to it. Okay, so now I am in a Microsoft Word document. You're probably going to notice that I have a message on my screen saying to select the icon or press Alt-I to draft with Copilot because I have Copilot installed on my Microsoft Word document. So don't even worry about that if you don't have Copilot. So to get started with this macro, all we have to do is choose View on the menu bar at the top. And then we're going to come over on the ribbon and click on macros and choose record macro. Okay, now the next thing that you gotta do is make sure that you give your macro the appropriate name. Okay, so now we're gonna name the macro and what I'm gonna do is just keep this really simple and I am going to name this the signature for my training account, which is Sean Clark. So I'm, I'm just gonna name it signature. Now, keep in mind, when you, when you um, create a macro, you cannot have any spaces in a macro, and you cannot start a macro with a number, but you can have a number in a macro. So we're going to do signature underscore to in, in, in place of a um, space, and I'm just going to name it Sean1, okay? Then I'm going to come down in the description and just type in basic signature. I can either store the macro in the document that is here on the screen, okay, which is normal.dotm, or which is the normal.template actually, or I can put it in the current document, which is document one. But what I'm going to do is I would like my macro to be available in every document I create going forward, or an existing document. I can either assign a button to the macro or assign a keyboard shortcut. And I'm gonna to choose to do a keyboard shortcut. And right here, the cursor is blinking under press new shortcut key. Let's say I chose control S. You're gonna notice that it's already assigned to file save. So you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna, you know, give your macro a reserved shortcut key, you know, to reserve that for your macro. So I'm not going to do that. That's okay. Let's just do Alt D. So Alt D is going to be the, the shortcut key I'm going to use here. I'm going to go ahead and choose assign. And then I'm going to choose close. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and type in Sean Clark. Press the enter key. And then I'm going to type administrative assistant. And then I'm going to hit the enter key two times. Because once you create this macro, you want to have the correct amount of space that you want to have in here and, and everything. So at this point, we're done. And now we're going to go back up to, um, we're already on the view tab. We're going to go over here to macros. And then we're going to choose stop recording. Okay, so now the macro is no longer recording. So now I'm going to just select the text, delete it. And now I'm going to press Alt D. And now you will see how Sean Clark, administrative assistant, shows up. And now you are able to, you know, kind of play around with this and do whatever you want to do with it. Let's just say Sean Clark gets married and she now has a name change. Now, I'm going to show you this in this particular tutorial right now. This is the easy part when you're going to go behind the scenes and work with the code. We're not really going to be working with code. We're going to just be changing her name. So what we're going to do is press Alt F11 on the keyboard. It's going to take you here to the code. And then we are looking for Sean Clark. And here you see signature Sean one, 
That's the macro we just created. Notice how selection dot type text text equals Sean Clark and Sean Clark is in quotes. So as long as I don't get rid of these quotes next to her name, then you're going to notice that I can just click right after Clark. She's going to be called Sean Butler. OK, so there we go. See how easy it is to change that. As long as I keep that quote in there, I'm good to go. So now let's say Sean Clark is also going to be um, changing jobs and she's going to be working in audit. So she's going to be an audit division manager. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the text administrative assistant and I'm going to type in audit division manager. OK, and then I'm going to go to the top and choose save. I'm going to choose Alt F11 to go back into the document, Microsoft Word. I am going to then delete this information. Mind you, what we are not recording the macro, the only thing we're doing is editing the macro. Now we're going to press Alt D, and you're going to notice that Sean Butler, Audit Division Manager, is now showing up in the screen. So you see how easy it is to make that change. But now let's kick it up a notch. Let's take and put the macro recording buttons on the quick launch toolbar so that you can make this much cleaner instead of having to go to the view tab every time you want to start that macro recorder. Because I totally believe that once you finish recording a macro, you want to be where you want to be at when you finish recording it. So when I created that signature, when I stopped recording the macro, I'm on the view tab, the, the view ribbon. And I want to be on the home ribbon because I do most of my stuff on the home tab. So every time I get ready to put my signature in, I don't want it to take me over to the view tab instead of keeping me on the home tab where I normally work. So now go ahead and take a look at my screen as I show you how to do that. OK, so now here we are. We are going to go and customize the quick access toolbar. So we're going to just go to the top right hand side of the screen and we're going to right click on one of these um, buttons on that quick access toolbar and we're going to choose customize quick access toolbar. When the window opens, we're going to go over here to choose commands from and then we're going to click on the drop down arrow and choose all commands. And then I'm just going to start scrolling down. These are alphabetized. So when you get to the M's, then you're going to know you're in the area for macros. Then I'm going to choose macros, view macros. OK, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on the add button. And what that's going to do is add it to the quick access toolbar. And then I can choose OK. So now when I go back to the home tab, I can access this quick access toolbar from any of these tabs, right? So I don't have to go to view to go to macros and then record macros. So now if I go back to home and then I want to go and create another signature, I can just go up here to the quick access toolbar, find the one for the view macros. Once you see that little down arrow, now, that's the same button that you had when you went to the View tab, but it's available on the Quick Access Toolbar. So now I can choose Record Macro, and then I can just call this My Test Macro. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose a button this time. And so at this point, I can go ahead and put a button on the Quick Access Toolbar, and I can just choose this item here, macro, new macros, my test macro, choose add, click OK. Now you can go ahead and record your macro. So I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to just start typing some text. And I'm just going to just type in, um, hello, world, how are you doing today? Thank you very much. Sincerely, Sean Butler, Audit Division Manager. And then I'm going to go up here to the Quick Launch Toolbar.
click on the drop down arrow and choose stop recording. So now I don't have to go all the way over to the view tab to stop recording. But notice how because I'm on the home tab, it does. I don't have to um, go back to the home tab after this runs. OK, so now my macro is all done. I'm going to even though I still had Sean Butler up here under the audit manager and her signature earlier doesn't mean anything. So we're going to just go ahead and just move, remove that and delete it. But now, in order to run that test macro that I have here, now you're going to notice I've got to go to the quick launch toolbar, and there's the button right there. So I'm just going to click on the button, normal, new macros, te my test macro, click on that, and there it is. So if you have standard text that you always have to run, this is a way that you can run that text, okay? Now, let's see if we can customize this button. Let's just right-click on it. And let's just um, choose Customize Quick Access Toolbar. And then I want to come over here and click on this button. And now I want to choose Modify. And I can now come over here and modify that button and then just choose one of these items here, one of these icons here that represents the button that I want to use for this macro. So I'm just going to just use this A on its side and choose OK, and then choose OK. And so now you're going to notice when I go up here to the Quick Launch Toolbar, that little A on the side right there, the little A that's kind of tilted over, that is my macro. Woo, that was a lot, wasn't it? I'm telling you, there's so much going on with these macros, but I want you to stay tuned as I begin to break down a lot of different things that you can do with the macros later in a later video and just kind of working through some of the other issues that you might find interesting. And that includes trying to do something different with the macro button that I just showed you how to do. In the meantime, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and leave your comments below if you have questions and we can see if we can sort them out. This has been Lady C. I certainly appreciate having you in my audience. And I'll see you on the next episode. Oh.